What they say outwardly is their concerns with regard to data collectors may not be the full story. What I often hear, even though they're saying one thing, is that what they're really saying is, I'm afraid for my job. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out with you once again in the podcast chair. I'm going to tell you up front, this is going to be a controversial episode, but I implore you to please listen to the end because some of the concerns out there regarding uh, property data collectors, I think are valid. I also wonder if we are putting our concerns in the wrong place. You'll know what I mean if you listen to the end, and I encourage you to do so. I also encourage you to reach out to Alamode. Uh, Alamode is a sponsor here and has been from the beginning. Check them out by going to alamode.com or call them at 800 Alamode. And of course, Working RE Magazine. If you want to know what's going on in the world of property data inspectors, uh, well, Working RE is always on top of every hot topic out there in the appraisal world. Check them out by going to workingre.com. Sign up for their free newsletter. Again, it's workingre.com. All right, folks, let's put it on the table. Uh, Fannie Mae has announced that uh, that they are going to be moving more and more toward uh, property data collectors, and that has caused many appraisers to lose their ever-living uh, we'll use the word crap. We'll keep it uh, family clean. Uh, and uh, and rightfully so. Uh, there's some concerns out there with regard to property data inspectors. Let's first talk about what it is and make sure that we are talking about the same definition. Because frankly, I think it makes a big difference to the conversation that at least I want to have with you today on the podcast. I have talked to other appraisers and sometimes it feels like we are two ships passing in the night. Because I'm talking about one definition of property data collector, and they're talking about a different. Uh, and I think this, I think this really boils down to the problem in and of itself. Is it a concern? Well, like many of the answers when it comes to appraisal and and surrounding the appraisal world and the appraisal industry and the appraisal profession and questions with regard to appraisals themselves, right? Uh, you know the standard answer, right? When someone asks a question, the answer is always. What two words? You know, it depends. Say it with me. It depends, right? Uh, you know, will will this deck uh, increase the value of my home? Well, it depends. Uh, will the 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 pig farm next door um, cause my my value to decrease? Well, it depends, right? This is this is the uh, the common thing uh, that we uh, that we we typically answer when it comes to uh, these types of questions. Well. With this question in and of itself, uh, we've got the same issue. We've got the same uh, uh, answer to the question, but we first have to define what is the question that we are all trying to ask. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, if we're talking about property data inspectors, okay, data collectors, sometimes I'm talking about one definition, and the appraiser across the table from me is talking about uh, what I would refer to as the Uber driver, right? Now, not to disparage Uber drivers in any way. I know many Uber drivers and they're great people. Um, but the point that they're trying to make is, and, and I've heard it said, what are you going to take Uber drivers and have them go walk through a, a property and take some photos? Well, folks, if that were the case, and if that's what Fannie Mae is talking about, I am as concerned as the next person. Okay. There's a video uh, that is uh, that is currently going around the internet, uh, and it's quite uh, quite uh, uh, quite popular. It's received uh, over over a couple of thousand views as of this uh, as of this recording. Uh, the the video on YouTube is called "Certified Appraisers versus Unlicensed Data Collectors," 
And it's by a, 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 a broker, uh, a real estate broker, not an appraiser, but a real estate broker uh, by the name of Lee Brown. She's pretty popular on, on YouTube. She's got like 10,000 subscribers and she presents herself well. She's a lot to say. Uh, and and frankly, her channel is interesting. I, I've watched several videos by her and I think that uh, I think that she does a wonderful job. Um, I also think she did a wonderful job on this video. Um, I thought about posting it on my private Facebook page. I decided against it simply because there was, first of all, already so much talk about it on some of these other pages. But second of all, I think videos like this and the discussion in general, and this is really where I want to set the foundation for the podcast today, could possibly be misunderstood. Okay. Now, again, I want to state em emphatically, I listened and watched Lee Brown's video at least twice, maybe three times. There was nothing in there in and of itself, especially if you go to the transcript that I disagreed with. Okay. So if you watch the video and you think that this is a podcast that is against that video, absolutely not. Way to go, uh, Ms. Brown. Hand clap. You did a great job. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, I, th I thought she did a wonderful job and, and laid out some of the problem. And the fact that it came from a real estate broker slash agent uh, was, was all the better, right? Here's an individual who is, is uh, understandably uh, asking if, if we should trust real estate property data collectors, okay? Here's the reason for the podcast today. One of the concerns that I have when I talk to appraisers about this subject of data collectors is that we put them all in the same basket. Now, hear me out. This is where it starts to get a, con a little controversial and you're going to turn off your, your earbuds and you're going to walk away. Okay, I, I implore you again, listen to the end. I think I'm going to lay out ideas in such a way that hopefully you'll agree with me. And if you don't, let's have a, a civil conversation about this. Okay. There are some big concerns about data collectors, okay? But I tend to think that despite what some appraisers are saying outwardly, and hear me out, the biggest concern that they have is that their job is in jeopardy. Let me repeat that. What they say outwardly is their concerns with regard to data collectors may not be the full story. What I often hear, even though they're saying one thing, is that what they're really saying is, I'm afraid for my job. Now, folks, I've been doing coaching now for 13 years. Okay? We established in, in 2010. And this is something that I have been fighting from the very beginning. And yes, I'm an outsider on this, but hear me out. I never, ever thought it was an appraiser's best use of their time to be in the inspection. Okay, again, hear me out. Are there concerns about data collectors? Yes, we will get into those today. I'm going to lay out some of the concerns, maybe not all of them, but some of the major concerns. And I'm going to probably agree with most of you out there. I'm going to agree with a lot of people who are posting this video and who are talking about this video. There's a lot of major concerns. And I have the same concern about the quote unquote Uber driver data collector as you do. Okay, I want to emphatically state that. However, I will not go so far as to say that I'm afraid for my job and I should be the one in the in the uh, inspection uh, because if if not, what next? Where else am I going to be replaced? Folks, if that is your best support for why we should not have data collectors, I'm afraid for our profession. And let me state it this way. As a professional, as a, as a real estate valuation professional, my best work, my best use of my time, my best value, we talk so much here about value, right? My best value, in fact, if you're on YouTube, I think it's still behind me. Yeah, value doesn't just happen. I've had that up for, for several months now on my, on my wall, right? Value does not just happen. And we're not just talking about real estate value here. It's kind of a play on words. I often close out my blogs and my podcast by saying, go create some value. And people get so concerned. Oh my gosh, you don't just create value, you report value. It's not the value we're talking about, folks. Not the value we're talking about, okay? And that's not the value I'm talking about here either. 
what is your best contribution to value, real estate appraisers? If it is, I have to be the one in the in the house, otherwise I can't trust the data, my friends, I don't know that we fully understand who we are as professionals. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, Dustin, Dustin, we understand that, but don't say that out loud. Don't say that on your podcast because it just gives clout to those out there who are push, pushing data collectors, okay? And I would say, so? My friends, we are in a moving target when it comes to real estate valuation. And if you want to remain relevant into the future, I cannot say this emphatically enough, you have got to recreate yourself. If you are the type of individual who fills out 1004s, and that's the way you were trained, taught, and educated, and that's really all that you do, my friends, the answer to what value do you provide to our clients and to the marketplace is, is quite sad, honestly. Are there concerns about data collectors? Absolutely. We'll get to those after the break. Are there some positives as well that we can look at? I think so. Okay. Hang tight with me. I promise we will get to that. But first, I want to pause and remind you that we're sponsored by a great company called Alamode. Alamode, of course, is the company that leads the pack when it comes to form filling for appraisals. Now, we've talked a little about form filling today, and it does a great job with that, right? But it goes so much further. If you want to bring value to the marketplace, Alamode has so many built-in tools that will allow you to bring that value with very limited time. That's the whole purpose of technology, right? Speed up the process. You're still the expert. The technology helps you to get there. Alamode.com or 800 Alamode. And of course, we're sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Folks, uh, the idea of data collection comes up quite a bit on Working RE Magazine. Why? Because it's a hot topic and everything with regard to value and the profession and everything else surrounding what we do as real estate appraisers is talked about in Working RE Magazine. Check them out by going to workingre.com. Again, it is workingre.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the program, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out once again in the podcast chair. We're talking about data collectors, and I'm going to take a, a slight diversion in just a few minutes. Um, I, I kind of have a, a teased it a little bit before the uh, before the break, but I first want to let you know that I have concerns like anyone else. My concern is not that my job is being replaced. Okay, let me emphatically state that I am not fearful in any way that by moving the inspection that the appraiser traditionally has done to a data collector is going to is going to re replace me as a real estate appraiser. I don't have a fear of that even in the slightest. I don't. And the reason for that is that is not where I see my most value. Now, are there concerns about using data collectors? Yes, and Lee Brown, bless your heart, on her YouTube channel pointed that stuff out, okay? So, a couple of concerns, right? First of all, the level of training. Okay, this goes to the old Uber driver definition of data collector. Folks, I'm sorry. If you're grabbing any individual that is not trained in appraisal, that doesn't know how to measure a property, that doesn't know how to look for mold, that doesn't know how to, to adhere to ANSI standards, that does not know how to take proper photos and, and report what is there, right? I have as big a concern as anybody else out there. And I know that there are examples after example after example of this happening. I had it happen in my own life, okay? Um, I've, I've had a situation where a, a data collector got information for a desktop that I was doing who did not report to me properly and as a consequence put me in a very difficult place, okay? I'll, that's as far as I'll go uh, with, with that comment because the statute of limitations isn't up yet hasn't been five years. Okay. Uh, it's been several years, but not five years. Uh, now we fixed the problem. We found out about the issue. We fixed the problem by a personal inspection uh, made by me. But this is an example of the concerns that I think many appraisers have and rightfully so, right? This is a concern that you should have. The level of training. Let's go to USPAP for a second. Now I don't have the chapter and verse in front of me, right? But the data, we are responsible for the data that is being collected. And that, I think that's one of the arguments that is being made most frequently by appraisers with regard to data collection. And it is my concern as well, 
right? We are responsible ultimately for the data that's being collected. And if the individual that is in that home or on that property is not properly trained, there may be a problem. Similarly, the other concern that I have is regarding their ethical and professional standards, right? Inspectors may not adhere to the same ethical and professional standards that you and I as appraisers might. They don't have a license typically, right? And so is their level of, of uh, caution the same as an appraiser? Probably not. Now that is a concern. And that goes into the concern of, is the data accurate? Is it reliable? And again, back to the USPAP, the professional practices, ethical practices that we adhere to as, as real estate appraisers. If we can't trust the accuracy of the data, can we even use the data? And that goes to my fourth concern, which is communication, right? Is there a proper line of communication between the data collector and the appraiser themselves? Now, let me in a very real way tell you how this is a problem or can be a problem, even with inter-office bifurcation. Okay? And I know bifurcation is a bad word, but in our office at my appraisal firm, we have utilized inter-office, and I want to stress that, okay, because bifurcation can be a bad word for the very reasons we are talking about it today, but it can also allow you to be more effective and more efficient at what you do. And so within our office, in our office, meaning I trained them personally, I trust them personally, we will sometimes have a trainee, for example, go out and do the inspection. We do everything according to USPAP, everything according to state law. Don't get on your high horse. We report, we talk about, we sign the report, everything, right? We're doing everything that we should be doing there, okay? But there are times that I send out a trainee to do an inspection, somebody I have trained, somebody I trust somebody I know has the expertise, somebody that I know has the technology, somebody that I know has the time to slow down and get it right. And then there may be a bump in communication. It may be as simple as saying, you know, maybe you accidentally put that it's a C4 condition when it really is a C3 condition. Can that affect value? For sure. Now, we've put things in place at our office to make sure that we cross-check everything right? You may, you may put C4 on the form, but if the appraiser actually doing the analysis back at the office who was not in the property is carefully looking through the notes and carefully looking through the photos, then that individual is going to say, hey, wait a second, I'm doing the write-up here. And you said C4, this does not look like a C4 to me. And thus there's open line of communication between those that are in the property and those that are doing the analysis. My question and my concern, and I know it's the concern of many of you who are listening today, is do you have that same line of communication or the same opportunity for clarification that we have inter office? If the answer to that is no, again, I have the same level of concern that you have and the same level of concern that my good friend, well, I, think she, I think she and I would have friend, be friends, uh, Lee Brown, uh, on, on YouTube had. The concerns with unlicensed data collectors is very real. Okay. I want to state that emphatically because this next part is going to be the 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 part that, that most people are going to quote. Did you hear what Dustin said about data collectors? He has no problem with them at all. Uh, not what I said. Listen to the whole episode. Okay. What I am saying is this property inspectors and data collectors, okay, can be a huge problem, which we have pointed out, I think, pretty clearly. However, and I want to go back to what we talked about before the break. With regard to my job, with regard to replacing appraisers, I have absolutely zero concern about that. And, and, and folks, I would say that those of you out here who are listening, and I'm sorry this is going to sound harsh, but if your job is no more important to you than thinking, by golly, if I'm not in the house doing the inspection, then what in the world am I good for? It's the same argument that was made several years ago, and it comes up frequently, right, with regard to comp pictures. What do you mean we shouldn't take comp pictures? Well, who's going to take the comp pictures? And if we don't take comp pictures, then what, uh, what good are we? I literally, I wish I had saved the quote because it was a Facebook quote. And, and, and I'm paraphrasing now, again, I didn't save the quote, but one of the appraisers, I remember we were talking about comp pictures and they said, if we're not taking the comp pictures, what good are we? Wow, folks, 
I would say the same thing for those of you who are out there saying, if we're not in the property doing the inspection, what good are we? Well, hell's bells, folks. If you cannot find more value in what you do than doing the inspection, and, and, and I'm sorry, it really is titled correctly. When, when you call these individuals data collectors, that's exactly what they are. So the YouTube video that I keep referring to is called Certified Appraisers versus Unlicensed Data Collectors. What you could have, have titled this, uh, Ms. Brown, is Certified Data Collectors versus Unlicensed Data Collectors. It would have been the same thing, right? Instead of using the word appraiser. Because in a very real sense, that's what we are. Now, again, do, don't misunderstand. Have I made the point that it would be wise for appraisers to be in the in the house? Certainly. Do I get all up in arms and concerned if we're not? If that data collector is, let's even say licensed, okay? I'm not necessarily for that, but let's say they're a licensed, trained, educated, experienced data collector one that can communicate the results properly. Do I have any concern over that? Not in the least. If I've got enough data that I feel I can credibly produce a, a value estimation and appraisal, I don't care where that data came from. I will even go so far, folks, as to, as to remind you that much of the data that you use comes from third parties. Okay, let me repeat that. Much of the data that you... Yeah, but Dustin, I don't rely on the assessor parcel number to, to value. Yeah, but you do rely on the uh, size of the lot. Did you go out there and personally, or do you have the expertise to personally survey the lot and make sure that it really is 0.25 acres? No, you're trusting a third-party data. Did you personally walk through comp number three to make sure that it was a C3 condition? Well, Dustin, I called the real estate agent. Okay, how is that any different then the subject matter for the subject itself, if you have a, 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 a licensed, certified, experienced, educated, trusted, communicative data collector. Again, do not misunderstand the podcast today. I am in no way rooting for data collectors. What I'm trying to do today, and I hope this came across, is that we look at this a little bit different. The modernization, like it or not, is happening. The modernization of the appraisal world is happening, like it or not. It is, okay? Now, are there some things that we can say? And are, are there, you know, uh, opinions that can be put out there? And, and can we talk to the movers and shakers and try to, to, to make changes? Absolutely, I'm all for that. I've been politically active from the beginning, okay? I absolutely believe that. But I also understand that the macro environment is changing. My question for you, appraisers, is are you changing with it? Are there ways that you can establish a clear line of communication in such a way that your value can be obtained and given, right, from the analysis side of the appraisal? Because in my opinion, that's the future of appraisal. It's not necessarily that we're the only ones that can be in the property. It's not necessarily that we're the only ones that, 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 that take uh, comp photos. Uh, my opinion is, that if that data can be trusted, and that's a big question mark right now, that's where the concerns are. But if we can get to the point that that data can be trusted, my point, appraisers, you're my audience, right? I'm not talking to Fannie Mae right now. I'm not talking to realtors right now. I'm talking to you appraisers. Can we find a way that the value that we bring to the marketplace is in our analytical skills, in our local market skills, in our understanding of, of why the market in Idaho Falls, Idaho is different than the market in Los Angeles, California. That's where the value comes in when it comes to the profession of real estate appraisers. Hope that's helpful to you folks. Thank you for joining me again. Join us on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, join us. Uh, would love to, uh, to, to get to the same subscriber level as Lee Brown, um, but go to YouTube and check out the Appraiser Coach Podcast. Thanks for joining me today and go create some value. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.